Hello children this is part 2 of chapter history spread of new ideas in the part 1 we have studied about the two new religion emerged during the 6th century BC and that were Buddhism and Jainism in part 1 we have learned about Buddhism now in this part we will learn about Jainism Jainism was founded by Rishabh Dev he was the first tithankar and was also known as adinath vardhaman mahavir was the most important religious teacher of jainis the jains count mahavir as the last 24th tithankar for jainis tithankar means preachers or teachers vardhaman mahavir was born in 540 bc at kundal gram in vaishali which is in bihar His father Siddharth was the head of Jantrika clan. His mother Trishla was a Lichavi princess. Around the age of 30 he left his family in search of truth. After wandering for 12 years and meditating hard he attained kavalya. Children kavalya means supreme knowledge. So he attained enlightenment and learned how to overcome both misery and happiness. Because of this great conquest he is known as Mahavir or the great hero he is also called Jin or the great conqueror because he had conquered over his miseries and happiness his followers were called Jains teachings of Lord Mahavir Lord Mahavir believed in leading a simple life He was against rituals and animal sacrifices and he believed in and laid great emphasis on ahimsa or non-violence. He believed that not only men but also animal plants had a soul. So one could not cause injury to animals, birds, insects or plants. Lord Mahavir believed man could free himself from the cycle of rebirth by attaining moksha children in hindu religion or mythology it is believed that going to moksha or attaining moksha means going to heaven so if the person is any person is going to heaven or attaining moksha so he will be free from all sort of cycle of rebirth rebirth as animal birds insect or plant or again man so he will be free from all sort of pain and he will achieve heaven so according to him this could be achieved through the three ratnas or the three jewels of life and these three jewels of life were right faith right knowledge and right action jainism taught five doctrines doctrines means principles or siddhant so these are number 1 do not commit violence that means ahimsa do not speak a lie do not steal chori nahi karna do not acquire property don't go beyond your needs control your needs and observe continence continence or nigraha which means follow the path of brahmacharya So the most important doctrine of Jainism is ahimsa which means non injury to all living beings. So Lord Mahavir said all beings long live to live do all things life is dear. Mahavir Swami gave importance to human values and preached equality of mankind. Unlike Buddhism later Jainism was also divided into two sects the digambars or the sky clad and the shwetambars or the white clad now children what is the basic difference between digambars and shwetambars according to digambar sect mahavira the 24th tithankar he didn't get married whereas shwetambar believed in the marriage of lord mahavira spread of jainism jainism spread from odisha in the east to gujarat in the west and also in the south The people of Shwetambar sect mostly spread in the states of Gujarat and Rajasthan whereas the people or the followers of Digambar sect 
mostly spread in the states of Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, etc. Children, in the chapter Vedic period, you have studied that many restrictions were imposed over women for religious rituals. But in Buddhism and Jainism religion, there were no such restrictions over the women and they were free to perform the rituals, religious rituals. Both Buddhism and Jainism became popular among the common people, such as peasants, traders, craftsmen, etc. The reason of the popularity of these two religions were because it was easy to practice. Unlike Vedic religion, they had no complicated and expensive rituals and ceremonies. Both the religion, Jainism and Buddhism, were preached in Pali and Prakrit languages. These two languages were the language of common people. Both these religions were open to all people as there were no foundation of restriction of the Varnas. So, this must have been appreciated by the lower castes who faced discrimination and inequalities in society and religious life. Buddhism opened his door for women they could join Buddha Sangh. Now what were Sangh? Sangh were established by Gautam Buddha in the 5th century BC. The term Sangh means assembly of community. It is used to refer to Buddhism and Jainism both. Sangh was established to spread the message of Buddha and his teachings. Sangh was open to all respective of Varna or gender. They made an arrangement in the form of Sangh which was made for them to stay together in the Sangh. Sangh were made because Lord Buddha and Lord Mahavi realized that people who left their homes could gain true knowledge. Vinipatika was the rule book for Buddhist Sangh in which all the rules were written to be followed in the Sangh. Accordingly to the book, all men could join the Sangh. Children also could join Sangh, but after seeking permission of their parents. Women have to take her husband's permission to join the Sangh. Free slaves or dasas were permitted to join the Sangh. The life of Sangh was very simple. For most of the time, they went to cities and villages at fixed hours to beg for food, to taught others, and to help others. Children, a very unique contribution of Buddhism is the establishment of many monasteries. These monasteries were called Vihas. Earlier monasteries were built of wood. Later, bricks were used in Western India. Monasteries were also dug out of caves and rocks. Monasteries comprised of small rooms for the shelter of monks. Monasteries became great centers of learning and some of them like Nalanda and Vikramshila in Bihar became famous residential universities around the world. Upanishads So what were Upanishads? When Jainism and Buddhism emerged, there were some other thinkers and philosophers who thought about various issues related to life and death like what is death, what is life, from where we are coming from, after death, where people goes. So these kind of questions were started developing in the minds of people. So they started thinking about these complex issues that uh, like meaning of human life, life after death, what is the meaning of Atman, that is Atma, that is individual soul or Paramatma that is universal soul like who is god where he is god in like such questions so these all questions were discussed by these thinkers and many debates and discussions happened and they have been recorded in the upanishads so this is the meaning of upanishad the technical meaning or the actual meaning the definition of upanishad is 
sitting near the guru or the teacher to get knowledge so what is the meaning of upanishad sitting near the guru to get knowledge the upanishads are written in the form of dialogues in debates between the guru that is teacher and their disciples that means students who sat near them and discussed about the wisdom and knowledge of their gurus and their teachers they have queried about their knowledge they got the answers so whatever the discussions held between the guru and the student that is called upanishad most of the composers and writers of upanishads were learned brahmins there were some educated women also like gargi who have composed many upanishad who took part in debates and discussions upanishad are priceless treasure of ancient indian heritage satya kama jabala was an ordinary man who had a deep desire to know about reality so he was accepted by a brahmin teacher called gautam and he became one of the most learned thinker of the times so many ideas of the upanishads were later developed by shankaracharya there are 13 main upanishads and they all were written between the 8th and 4th century bc in sanskrit language different upanishads are related with the four vedas and these four vedas are rigved yajurved samved and atharved the longest and the oldest upanishads are brihadaranyak and chandogya upanishad so children upanishads are priceless treasures of ancient indian heritage alike are four vedas